Hi everybody. The top of the morning to you. I'm Ed O'Neill and I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about the use of DNA in examining the genealogy and the history of the O'Neills of Ireland. Oh no, you say. I don't want to hear any of that stuff. Is this more of that scientific mumbo-jumbo? I can assure you that this will not be some science class. I'm going to try to reduce it to something simple enough where we can all understand it. But before talking about that DNA stuff, let's take a detour to talk about Neil of the Nine Hostages. Neil, who died around the year 405, established a dynasty in Ireland that lasted through his direct descendants for about 1,200 years. Neil lived about 600 years before last names or surnames came into use in Ireland. But history records that he was the genetic ancestor of an extremely large number of people having numerous surnames that later came into use. I have shown here just a few of the surnames recorded as descended from Neil. There are many, many, many more. I will use the surname shown in the upper part, O'Neill, O'Kane, McLaughlin, and Sweeney, to make a later point. So try to remember them as descendants of Neil of the Nine Hostages. Now let's take a detour, this time away from Neil of the Nine Hostages and back to DNA. I will return to Neil in a few moments. What follows I have labeled DNA for Egypts. The DNA that I'm talking about is Y DNA, which indicates it is the DNA of the Y chromosome. Women do not have Y chromosomes, so the DNA I'm talking about is entirely about men. Using very powerful microscopes, scientists discovered that all Y chromosomes look somewhat alike, and there are certain areas that are the same in each one. They call these areas markers. Then they've given each one of these markers some goofy sounding name like DIS-393 or DIS-385A. This is illustrated on the drawing. Even though my drawing gives the names of only 12 markers, in fact scientists have identified many, many more markers in the Y chromosome and have named each. After naming the markers, scientists can then zoom in on each marker and lo and behold, they see a number of helixes in the markers. I call these helixes squigglies. And the number of squigglies is different from marker to marker. We see 15 squigglies for marker 385B. Now if we count the number of squigglies at each marker, we can then create a table of squigglies. I show here only 12 markers as an example. But in reality, I could show a table with 25 or 37 or 67 markers. The amazing thing that scientists have discovered is that a father and his son, in all but a few isolated cases, 
will have the same number of squigglies at each marker. Now, stepping back to talking about Neil of the Nine Hostages, Neil, his son, his son's son, his son's son's son, etc., would then have the same number of squigglies at each marker. That is, they would have the same DNA. So now let's take a look at the surnames that I talked about as historically identified descendants of Neil. That is O'Neill, O'Kane, McLaughlin, and Sweeney. Many men with these surnames or variations of the surnames have been DNA tested and what we find is that a significant number of the O'Kanes, McLaughlins, Sweeney's, and the other surnames I showed on the earlier chart have DNA very similar to one another. This says that they are all descended from the same person and this person is likely Neil of the Nine Hostages. O'Neill is the exception as I'll discuss in a few moments. These are the 12 marker values for those men said to be descended from Neil, including O'Kane, McLaughlin, and Sweeney. One other comment. I have said that a father and his son almost always have the same DNA. But in actuality, one of those 12 markers will change, on an average, every 900 years. Now what about the O'Neills? About 200 O'Neills have been DNA tested, and a few have results similar to that of the others said to be descendants of Neil of the Nine Hostages but at least three times as many have a different DNA, but one that is very similar to that of the others in this group. Scientists tell us that this means that this larger group of O'Neills are descended from the same person, but that that same person is not Neil of the Nine Hostages. I have labeled the larger group as the O'Neill variety. This figure illustrates the differences between the DNA of Neil and that of the O'Neill variety. So let's review what we've covered so far. First, scientists have identified areas of men's Y chromosomes and have named them. They call these areas markers. Second, they can count squiggles at each marker and create a table of squigglies for each marker. Third, a father and his son, in almost all cases, have the same number of squigglies at each marker, that is, the same DNA. Fourth, this implies that all male-to-male -male descendants of Neil of the Nine Hostages will have the same or nearly the same DNA. Fifth, significant numbers of men with surnames historically linked as genetic descendants of Neil have the same DNA. Sixth, a few O'Neills possess this DNA. And seventh, many, many more O'Neills possess a different DNA, which I've labeled O'Neill variety. Now let's take a look at the recorded history of the O'Neills, the O'Kanes,
the McLaughlins, and the Sweeney's to see if it tells us anything. This next chart will show the recorded history of the Tyrone O'Neills. In brief, it shows the descent of the Tyrone O'Neills from Neil of the Nine Hostages. It also shows that Fergil, King of Ireland, who died in 718, was ancestor to both the O'Neills and the O'Kanes. Either Hugh Finlieth, who died in 875, or Domhnall of Armagh, who died in 980, was ancestor of both the O'Neills and the McLaughlins. And Hugh Athanlen, who died in 1033, was ancestor to both the O'Neills and the Sweeney's. Since O'Kanes, McLaughlins, and Sweeney's all have the DNA of Neil of the Nine Hostages, this says the O'Neills up until 1033 would also have had that same DNA. But what about the Tyrone O'Neills after the year 1033? Well, let's look at some other things that might shed some light. First, there's the McShanes, who share a common ancestor with the O'Neills in Convacock O'Neill, who died around the year 1559. Several McShanes have tested O'Neill variety. Second, there are two O'Neills who have been tested recently, who have genealogies also back to Convacock documented in Desmond O'Neill's book, The Ancient and Royal Family of O'Neill. And they have tested also O'Neill variety. The fact that some O'Neills have Neil-like DNA and that the O'Kanes, the McLaughlins, and the Sweeney's with common ancestors back to the O'Neills year 1033 and sooner, and who also have Neil-like DNA, seems to say that the original Tyrone O'Neills were descended from Neil of the Nine Hostages. However, the fact that McShane's, with a later common ancestor with the O'Neills, and that two persons with documented genealogy back to Con Bacock O'Neill, all tested O'Neill variety, these together suggest that the later Royal Tyrone O'Neills were of a different lineage, that is, not descended from Neil of the Nine Hostages. As an aside, I have also tested O'Neill variety. So I believe I am a descendant of the later Royal Tyrone O'Neills. Some of what I have just described was published in the Journal of Genetic Genealogy in a paper I co-authored with John McLaughlin in 2006. This concludes what I have to say on the use of DNA in looking at the genealogy and the history of the Tyrone O'Neills of Ireland. It's a very rich history, and I'm extremely proud to be a part of it.